I think uh, a lot of readers know me from having done, written um, six books with Jim Patterson. Um, all of them went to number one in the States, I think here too, and a few made into movies, so that was all very exciting and sort of teed me up to do my own books. Uh, it's great to launch your own career when you've had all these uh, senior name at the top of the bestseller lists and when you brought, at least in the States, a million readers with you and certainly internationally, um, you know, quite the same. The Dark Tide is about uh, two crimes that take place in and around Greenwich, Connecticut, which is a suburb, a, a very affluent suburb of New York City. Um, one is a bombing in Grand Central Station, which um, Karen Friedman's husband of 18 years has uh, actually by accident found himself on that train and is killed. The second is much more benign. It's a hit and run accident that takes place at the same, in the same morning in the town of Greenwich. And um, Ty Houck, who's the head of detectives there, thinks of it as a much more suspicious accident than it seems at first. Um, and in pursuing it, there's a clue that sort of amazingly leads back to no one else but, but uh, Karen Friedman, uh, the, the, the wife of, uh, of this murdered person. And so it's a book that leads through um, money laundering, through uh, hedge fund losses, through conspiracy, through murder and then has this deepening relationship between these two characters, Ty and Karen, both of whom um, are touched by tragedy in their lives. What was the inspiration for me was 9-11, and I didn't really want to write a 9-11 story, but um, when it happened, I guess my twisted imagination sort of was always working in terms of someone who might have wanted to use an event like that as a cover to change their life and disappear. In fact, I actually think there were cases of that. So the dark tide, which begins with sort of a monumental um, explosion in Grand Central Station, actually began in my mind as a 9-11 story. Um, but it would have only been there for one chapter, so I don't want readers to think that I write about you know, terror or catastrophe or because all that really is is a launching pad for, for grief and loss. And in the case of the dark tide, a woman who lost her husband. I have a philosophy, and I learned a little of it from Jim, but some of it is my own, that the procedural crime novel, as we think of a police detective and kicking the tires of evidence and sort of plotting against the, you know, trying to, trying to you know, weave his way through the puzzle of the bad guys, to me, um, I think this is sort of a dying art. I think it seeded itself to other mediums such as CSI and such as Law and Order that bring stories to market faster, much faster, and probably with more um, authenticity than, um, than um, even crime writers. So what I like to do in terms of inspiration is to find compelling family or emotional stories and then weave a crime around them. So I sort of go at it a little backwards than I think the traditional novelist. What I want you to come away with is the emotional resonance of the story because I think that's what you keep with you long after the car chases and the bullets stop flying and the car chases are over. So I sort of go at it a little differently. I won't say specifically what's next because sometimes it influences the reading of the current book out there. But I'm uh, a book a year guy. Um, I have been, certainly with Jim, and just signed a very long-term deal out to 2015 with HarperCollins. So I'll be creating a book a year long after anyone I know at HarperCollins has probably left the company. Um, but hopefully the readers will not have left their companies and they'll be able to look forward to something from me.